how addictive is salt when compared to the fat and the sugar, which I always refer to as the holy trinity of food addiction? Absolutely. You and I are so much on the same page. You're my um, guy. Absolutely. Salt is um, almost as addicting as the caloric rush. The caloric rush is number one. That means how many, and that's oil and sugar and white flour. And don't forget, white flour is a sugar equivalent. It comes into the bloodstream with glucose at the same speed as eating sugar, straight sugar or honey does. You know, so honey, maple syrup, sugar, white flour, it's all just sugar. It's the cake diet people eat, right? <laughs> but then worldwide, sodium is probably the leading cause of death worldwide, of accelerating death, premature death. I mean, the whole world that eats sodium develops high blood pressure and heart disease. It doesn't even matter if you're on a vegan diet. Because if you're salting your food, you're still at risk of hemorrhagic stroke. Because salt insidiously weakens the endothelial lining of blood vessels. It causes irritation, inflammation, reduction of nitric oxide production. We, we call it microvascular hemorrhages that little over the years build up, weakening the interior lining of the blood vessels. What I'm saying right now, and is immunosuppressive too, and also is weakens the, the gut lining as well. So it's not just that salt raises blood pressure. Because you know how people say, oh, I can have salt. My blood pressure is great. Well, they don't realize that everybody's blood pressure is great to a point in their life when after eating salt for enough years, they develop high blood pressure like everybody else does. And then taking it away, it doesn't have as much effect anymore because you took it away after you had the, your, neural, your sympathetic tone in your brain flipped over. And now you take it away, it's not going to be as responsive. But in any case, then we don't know. My biggest gripe with the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology is that they advise people with heart disease and with high blood pressure to cut the salt down from the average American of over 3,000 a day to under 1,500 milligrams a day. And I'm saying that's like telling a person to quit smoking after they develop lung cancer. That's like saying, oh, people who come and develop lung cancer or, or, or COPD or you know, lung disease from smoking should cut, should cut back on or cut out smoking. Well, that's ridiculous. We should, if it was bad, if they should, if it caused that problem, they shouldn't cut it out after they developed the problem. They should have never had it to begin with. It shouldn't be educating people to cut out with heart disease or high blood pressure to cut out sodium. It should be educating children in the schools and it should, a whole population from birth to death should cut out sodium, should cut out the added sodium if we want to prevent these heart disease and, and strokes. And vegans are, of course, still risk for hemorrhagic strokes from eating salt in their diet, maybe even higher risk than people who eat animal products who get embolic strokes. But in any case, just to reinforce this, there are primitive societies that live, that don't live with, um, involved in civilizations that use salt, like tribes in the Amazon jungle that don't salt their food. And those populations, the children and the infants, the toddlers have very low blood pressure. They stay stable through childhood and late teenage years, it doesn't rise. And the most middle-aged and elderly people have the same blood pressure as children and toddlers do in these populations that don't salt their food. Um, whereas in America, for example, toddlers and children, by the time they're teenagers, they already have blood pressure that's borderline, that's high, elevated, it's no longer normal. It's not considered high by our American standards, but our American standards are, are not really, are not normal. You know, 140 over 90 above is high blood pressure, but actually, you know, probably anything above 120 is probably really high blood pressure. You know, we probably should be running in the 100 to 110 range. But in any case, what I'm saying is blood pressure rises gradually. And our, it's our lifetime exposure to sodium, just like our lifetime exposure to cigarettes that affects these later life risks. And you don't wait till you develop disease to cut down or cut it out. You do it now as early as possible in life if you want to have the maximum lifespan possible and not be at risk of later life issues. So, so absolutely, salt is highly addicting. It deadens the taste buds and makes you no longer be able to enjoy natural foods. By the way, too much sugar past the bliss point, too much salt, and too highly spiced foods all have an effect to neg a negative effect on weakening the taste muscle. So now a piece of lettuce or a strawberry or a slice of avocado doesn't taste as delectable or artichokes are so good without anything on them. Just plain artichoke hearts are so flavorful. But people who are eating standard foods with so much salt and sugar and spice, they even the hot spices, they can't even enjoy the, an artichoke or a piece of an asparagus just naturally without doused in something because they don't even, it doesn't even taste flavorful to them.